playing kind of a Vladimir Putin type of character. Oh, Vladimir Putin, eh? That is my Vladimir Putin impression. Hi, I'm Vladimir Putin. I steal billions for my own citizens. I- Just- Why is he like this weird combination of like Swiss and Danish? Because uh, that's Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Vladimir Putin. Oh. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction to Corbin. I'm Vladimir Putin. Uh, you know, when Vladimir eats beans, he's Putin. Today, what are we doing, Rick? We are talking about the farts of Vladimir Putin. Oh, man. They're stinky. <laughs> uh, ooh. Mac, Mac, Mac. He used to work for the KGB. That stands for, can I get some beans? (laughs) (laughs) That makes us Vladimir Putin. It's a cover of Rajasur's Oru Pungavanam. Forgive the mispronunciation. This is a song from 1998 film called Agri Nakhradin. You should do a better Vladimir Putin impression. Directed by Manny Rathman. <laughs> this album was a tour de force. Key highlights of song. Please pay close attention to the bass lines throughout the song. Roger Sir is the emperor of bass lines. This song is yet another testament. The melody itself is a chaste cornatic. South Indian classical music from raga, pattern of tune, roughly but imperfectly translated to scale in Western classical music. But the composition and arrangement would completely obscure the Karnatic Raga by intent. Rajasar creates his own genres while drawing from existing ones. The bass lines, strings, percussion, and even the song subtly mask the Karnatic flavor of the vocals. The theme of this song is about a woman, one of the female leads, pining for the man she's in love with. It's sensual, soft, understated. And has a lazy vibe going on. Cool. Just like me in bed. <laughs> lazy vibe? I have a lazy vibe going on. The women love it. I ride, Oh my God, I love your lazy vibe. It comes after I ride the horse without shirt on. It makes my vibe lazy. All the pressure on my couscous from the horse's <laughs> <Shut> back. So pay attention to the bass line, pal. Or pay attention to your mom's bass line. <laughs> Idiot.
Wow. Gorgeous. Is it over? Yeah. Aww. I could have got on for five more minutes. Easy. Man, that was good. And thank you so much for making us focus on the bass because the bass was so underneath. I probably would have picked up on it because it's so amazing, but could have easily if we weren't really paying attention and maybe kind of tired and just would have been easy to miss. Mm. The, the bass... The combination of the bass and the strings in that arrangement were just incredibly good. What was different about it? I mean, all I know well, is the that bass they line, good. So it was deceivingly complex in the same way one of my favorite bass lines always references the bass line in Rio from Duran Duran. Mm. Because you just love the song. You would forget to... And I, I've heard a breakdown on KLOS here about it, and it made me so happy because they said the exact thing that I've thought for years where you know they take apart every little thing and then just drop it out so you only hear the bass line. And the bass line, you've heard it for so many years, you just don't even think about it anymore. But when you really listen to the bass line in Rio, you realize, that's nuts. Where did he come up with that? Not only rhythmically, but the note-wise. And it's insanely complex, mm. the bass line to Rio, when it could have easily just been a pretty straightforward bass line. But and the same thing here. Rather than just do something that could have been really basic, it's not basic. It's the intervals are unpredictable all over. And when the strings are playing these notes that are carrying, we talk about this all the time, the tonic, which is like if the if it's in the key of E flat, the E flat note is the primary note and everything's built around that. The strings were kind of doing what you would expect. Their movements were pretty natural as far as what you would hear, but the bass rather than be like on the tonic, was always on some other note and moving around. And, and it's, so it's so cool to listen to the way that music is created because oftentimes like the strings will be doing something that on the, on the, sh on the sheet of music is doing this and the bass is doing this or opposite. They kind of cross each other. And based on the lyrics as well, which we didn't get the vantage point of this, but you can hear some things orchestrally when something's spoken of about being exalted, mu the music line in an instrument can go up. And if something else is about going down lyrically, the musical will go down. Hmm. So it's just incredible composition. Not easy, basic stuff at all in that. Even though it sounded like an easy, basic song, right? It did. It sounded like a pretty easy going, just fun, walking through the park. But it's a pretty intricate song musically going on there. Um, and I know they said it's from a Monty Rotnam film. You know we're getting a Monty Rotnam film this year, right? Oh, uh, like a new film. We are? Yeah. It's called... Um, I did not know that. Uh, well, the trailer hasn't come out. I think it comes out in September. Oh, my goodness. And it's with... Uh, Bonnie and Sylvan. It's with <gasps> Arya, Vikram, uh, Karthi. Um, wow. Let's see. Anybody else that we know right now? Prabhu? No, it's not. It's no, no, no. That's Prabhu. the other yeah, Prabhu. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's a historical a novel by... Uh, that Kalki Krishnamurthy. Composed by A.R. Uh, Rahman. Uh, wow. So it's going to be a... Uh, I had no well, idea. Well, I, I find it, because obviously that's a huge film, and I think it's also, I think it costs, 
I think somebody said it costs like 500 quarter lacquer. I don't know. Right. You know a big amount. A ridiculous amount of money. Uh, this one. So it's like a big, big film. Awesome. But all the other big, big films, we get like announcements for, right. title announcements for. Right. I haven't got anything from this. And it's coming out coming September. Out September. Wow. That's why I just find it strange that I was like, because I even like Brahmastra, right? Yeah. We got a title announcement for right. Brahmastra. Uh, and it was just they, Ranbir standing there. He may have, as well as it could have been the producers. Um, I mean, he's one of the producers. So he very well may have said, I. I want all of the boom of the big summer things that are going on to kind of drift away, and a month before we come out, we'll just drop the bomb on everybody. Also, I know, I know we haven't seen it, but say that name, uh, Ravanan. Ravanan. We've seen that's the one where him, Vikram, and Ashwarya are the at the waterfall. Like he, she, he's her. Captain. Oh, he's the captor. He's the captor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of her. Okay. Um. They're in that film together, so I didn't, obviously we haven't seen that film. But is this related in any way? It can't be. It's it off of another be. historical novel. Yeah, I think it's off. Of, I think it's just them, just them together pairing again, um, which will be uh, once again our first Ashwarya film, new, new, uh, and obviously in the sense the channel existed. We've not seen a Vikram film yet either. Correct. Uh, and so obviously we need to get to Karthi. We we just saw in um, what did we just see him in? I don't know. Kaithi. Oh, Kaithi. That's, that's right. What, um, and obviously he was in Vikram, right? Yep. Wasn't he? Vikram! He was, right? I'm not crazy. Vikram! Yeah, he was. No. Vikram! Am I? Yeah. Where? Okay, cool. I was like, he was in that, right? Yep. I could have swore he was. Anyways, yeah, so I just wanted to... I was like, That's awesome. I find it so strange, because I was like, oh, this is like a, ma- a, a big a big film. Why haven't we gotten anything know. for this? It's Mani Ratnam with A.R. Rahman and, and Shwarya and, Shwari and, and Vikram. Vikram and Karthi. Just strange to me. Very strange Anyways, to me, too. Uh, fantastic, fantastic yeah. uh, performance. Please let us know more what we can react to down below. Just-